Hi, my name is Laura Kleffman and I'm with Outlook Therapy. I made this video to show you a few different types of schedules and task schedules. Another name for a task schedule is a to-do list. It is known and recommended that visual communication be used for people who have autism spectrum disorder. In a way, you can think about using visuals as someone's first language. Visuals also provide structure and expectations for the day's events. The words you're hearing from me right now are verbal. Verbal communication is a second language and cannot be seen. If I learn a second language, I will always feel more comfortable with my first language. The individuals we support need to be communicated with in their first language too. I hope this short video gives you some good ideas about how to make and use visuals. Here are some examples of some to-do lists or task schedules. They could be super simple, like writing down what's going to happen when I get some errands done. It can be very complex, showing each step along the way in the brushing teeth chart. Sometimes it helps just to point at the picture. Sometimes I work with people on the autism spectrum who just need to know that I'm keeping track of their needs. And if the plan is to go to work, go visit Aunt Betty, and then go to Adventure Zone, they're more excited about the Adventure Zone than they are the work and the Aunt Betty. But sometimes we have to get the hard stuff done first. So when work is done, it's time to go see Aunt Betty, and then it's Adventure Zone time. So just by me kind of giving a label to each item that we're doing for the day is enough of a visual so that that person knows that you haven't forgotten what the really important thing is that they need to do, and they can help track to know that what they want to do is going to happen too. Okay, let's talk about a daily schedule. A daily schedule tells both you and me the events that are going to happen for the day, or maybe a certain part of the day, or the shift you're working. It sets an expectation and it prepares the person for the day's events. Please reinforce the power of a schedule by keeping the schedule as current as possible within your control. Change the pictures around as the sequence of events has a change and take pictures off when that time of day or that item is finished or all done. When we talk about the schedule, we can point to the schedule and we're combining someone's first language, visuals, with their second language, verbal. Staff expectations are better understood by the individual. So maybe in the morning after helping Johnny go to the bathroom, take a shower and get dressed and we come downstairs and we're about ready to have breakfast, I'm gonna say, hey Johnny, let's take a look. Did we go to the bathroom? Yep. This goes in the all done pile. Did we take a shower? Yep. Are you dressed? Yep. All right, so what's next, Johnny? Oh, looks like it's breakfast. Okay, let's go to the kitchen table. So then we're helping to transition from one thing to the next. And even though we might be just talking about breakfast, Johnny also sees that after breakfast, I need to clean the table because that's what I've added to the schedule. And then Johnny also knows that he gets to pack his backpack and go to school after. So this is preparing an expectation for the day and it also gives us a visual so that it's not something we're making up and it's supporting the person on the spectrum the best way we know how. In this example of a schedule, we have a picture of the person the schedule is for, and then we also have a picture of the staff member that's supporting that person today. So that's kind of a nice little visual orientation. Here you can see we have a horizontal schedule for what's happening for the evening. When set table is done, can be taken off and I like to have velcro on the back because that's where the pieces go for me so I can use them find them again and then I can talk to that person about its iPad time 
Now, part of the reason why we have the iPad here is because sometimes we need help transitioning to get off of the iPad and food is a huge motivator. So putting a highly motivating, two highly motivating activities together will help it with that transition when it's time to be done with the iPad. Also using a timer can help you with transitions as well. Here's my contact information if you have any questions or want to reach out. Thank you.